talking about branches of the external carotid artery. Before we jump into the external carotid artery, we need to know that the external carotid artery comes of different origins on both right and left. Hence why we have the image on the screen now. So we have the arch of the aorta where my mouse is pointing to, then we have the brachiocephalic trunk first, then the left common carotid and the subclavian. Now on the right side, the common carotid artery comes off the uh, brachiocephalic trunk, which then goes on to form the common carotid, then splits into external carotid and internal carotid. The way you can identify external carotid artery on a growth specimen or on your exams is the external carotid artery would have more branches as well as it would be more externally and it would be bigger and thicker in size. The left side of the body comes um, the, off, off the arch of the aorta, we have the left common carotid which then splits into both the external carotid and the internal carotid. So remember, they differ in both sides of the, um, sides of the body. The mnemonic to be used to memorize the branches of the external carotid artery is she always likes friends over papa, sister and mama. Pause the video and try to memorize the mnemonic if you're someone who learns by mnemonics. Now the S stands for superior thyroid artery, then the O A stands for ascending pharyngeal, L for lingual artery, L for like, and then we have facial artery or occipital going towards the back, then we have the posterior auricular, then we have the maxillary. The maxillary is a huge branch of the external carotid which gives off subdivision branches which will be given, which will be illustrated in a different video. Then we last but not least we have the superficial temporal artery. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight branches of the external carotid artery to remember. So we have superior thyroid, ascending pharyngeal, lingual, uh, facial, occipital, maxillary, posterior and superficial temporal. Now let's jump into the 3D anatomy and see where exactly these go and I'll illustrate the different anatomy model of the external carotid artery. But before we get into the external carotid artery, I would like to start with by the differentiation. So we have the arch of the aorta as you can see here and what we have here is the right side of the patient and the left side of the patient. So we have the brachiocephalic trunk first and then we have the left common carotid artery going up where the mouse is pointing and then the left subclavian artery. The right subclavian artery carries on down after the brachiocephalic trunk over in this region. Now on the right side the difference is the common carotid artery comes off the subclavian part and then it splits into the external carotid artery which is pointed to by, the, by, my, by my mouse now and in this small one is the internal carotid artery. So if you can see it, the common carotid artery goes into the external carotid artery. Now we'll go through the branches in a second. Now let's switch the side of the model and see on the left side. But on the left side you can see from your understanding that the left common carotid artery comes directly off the arch of the aorta and then we have the external carotid artery in big and then we have the carotid sinus here and then we have the internal carotid artery. The barrier receptors are usually found in the arch of the aorta and in this region here on the common carotid artery or the sinus where it bifurcates into the external and the internal. Now using our mnemonic from before we should know the different branches of the external carotid artery. Apart from one, I've labelled seven of them in this diagram. And now let's take a look at them. The first one was superior thyroid artery. So off the external carotid artery, the first branch that comes down is the superior thyroid artery. And then we had an ascending laryngeal artery, which I could not identify in this 3D model. Maybe they don't have it in this application, or maybe they don't have it in this um, 3D model that I'm using. But usually, in, for examination purpose, know that there is ascending pharyngeal. Just pause the video, go back to where the PowerPoint was to find out where it was. Then we have what's known as the facial artery. The facial artery usually goes on and gives different branches. The facial artery itself has what's known as the angular artery, as you can see in the screen. And then it also gives different branches to the different bones. So we have the superior labial artery. The so facial artery comes off the external artery gives off an angular artery towards the eye, towards the corner of your eyes or right and then we have superior labial which makes this the inferior labial artery. Then we have so so far we had superior thyroid artery shown here, then we had the facial artery. The next one we had was the maxillary artery. The maxillary artery is complicated because it's located 
underneath the mandible. Now, in your gross uh, anatomy or in your laboratory examinations or something, if they have cracked open the mandible, know that the artery that they're trying to show you is the maxillary artery. Sometimes students usually get confused between the maxillary and the facial artery because they do have branches that go down in the same direction. But maxillary artery is found more profundus, i.e. more deep. Then we have the occipital artery, which supplies the back of the head in the occipital lobe regions. So you can see the occipital artery, direct branch off the direct branch of the um, external carotid. Then we have the posterior auricular artery, which is identified here just behind the external acoustic meatus or the ear canal. And then last but not least, we have the superficial temporal artery. So these are the branches of the external carotid artery that you need to know. Now they all supply the muscles in the region. Facial artery goes on to supply the muscles of fa facial expression. Thyroid artery obviously goes to the thyroid. It's self-explanatory. Posterior auricular goes to supply the skin at the back of the occipital lobe as well as the hair follicles and everything. The uh, occipital, again the same. Posterior auricular for the ear. Now the superficial temporal artery because the tempor musculus temporalis sits here, which is a muscles of mastification, i.e. chewing and stuff. This artery goes and supplies that huge muscle that sits in that region as well as the skin. So now I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Next one would be the branches of the maxillary or the branches of the brachial artery.